What's up YouTube? This is Matt Brown with another IoT hacking video. Today we are going to discuss art poisoning and network traffic analysis of SSL traffic. So without further ado, let's jump into that. So I have in my hand the first ever security related book I ever purchased back in high school back in 2007. So you can do the math, figure out roughly how old I am. So this book discusses the use of Wireshark to capture network traffic across the network. But sometimes you are not in a position between the thing that you want to sniff and where that traffic is going, maybe out to the internet. Uh, so one of the things this book discusses, this, this old book discusses, is ARP cache poisoning. So right here in chapter two, it gives us a nice description of how this thing called ARP, ARP poisoning works. So today, I'm going to show you how to do that, how to capture uh, traffic coming from a simulated IoT device, which is going to uh, be done with a Raspberry Pi, uh, on our host system, and how we can intercept and start viewing that traffic in Wireshark. And then, because today, unlike back when I was in high school, uh, most web traffic is encrypted with TLS, and we're going to discuss how to peek inside of that TLS traffic if the IoT device is not verifying the authenticity of the certificate it's getting from a server. So with that, we're going to jump into my Linux system here. And we're going to discuss the fundamentals of ARP poisoning. So ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. So here I have dumped the ARP table on my Raspberry Pi. So uh, the IP address, uh, this is the IP address of my Raspberry Pi right here. And then down here we can see the IP address of the gateway is 10.10.1.1. And we can see its MAC address. So the address resolution protocol, it is responsible for mapping a MAC address to an IP address. So with the ARP protocol, you can ask questions like, who has the IP address 10.10.1.1? And then what's supposed to happen is that only the legitimate uh, owner of this IP address responds with their MAC address. Uh, but the ARP pro in the ARP protocol, there's no verification of this. This is a completely insecure protocol. There's no security built into it at all. And so an attacker can respond and say, hey, 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 I am this IP address. Um, also, there is an even worse thing where, uh, and that's what we're going to do today with our ARP uh, spoofing tool, where you can answer the question that uh, nobody even asked. You can you can give an answer to a question no one asked. And so you can just tell a device, in this case, we're going to be telling our Raspberry Pi, like, hey, I am this router. So we're going to do that uh, with a command down here. But before that, before we do that, I'm going to jump over to GitHub because I have uh, documented this process over here in this uh, Man in the Middle Tools repository, which I will link in the description of this video. So, uh, with this repository, we have a couple things that we need to do uh, before we uh, do our art poisoning. Um, I'm not going to go into this too much, but these are just steps you're going to want to follow on your system where you're doing art poisoning. Uh, IP forwarding is a property of a networking stack where it will forward the traffic on if it's not destined for its IP address. So when we do our ARP poisoning attack, we want to forward the traffic on to its intended destination. And that's what this will do. And then disabling ICMP redirects will prevent the system from correcting this mistake uh, through this mechanism. Uh, and then we're going to do this. We're going to perform an ARP, ARP spoof with this ARP spoof command. And so we're going to pass it the interface uh, that is on the network that we want to uh, target that has a device that we want to target. So this attack only works on the same network. You have to be on the same network as the intended uh, victim of this attack. So what we're going to do is pass the IP address of our target and then the IP address of the gateway after that. And then this R flag 
is going to make this a bi-directional attack so that every anything that the gateway is trying to send back to our target device, it also will send to us. So we're going to be spoofing both ends uh, so that they direct all traffic uh, in a bi-directional way through our system. So we're going to go back here. So we, so we see currently our ARP table. This is, this is correct. And so we're going to see this ARP table change once we perform our attack. So uh, we've put in the IP address of, uh, I, I have these reversed. Uh, the order does not matter because this is bidirectional. So uh, I have here the uh, gateway, the router on this network, and then here is the victim device. And so I'm going to run that command. And it's going to start just printing stuff out to that console. I'm going to move that away from my other screen. And then up here, what we're going to notice is when we run this command again, now we see that this IP address has a different MAC address. And it's actually the same as this other one, which is my system. So this is my attacker machine here. It has the 1.4 address. And we can see right here that this is, in fact, the MAC address that it now thinks is the router's MAC address. So anytime that this uh, Raspberry Pi wants to send data out to the internet through its gateway, it's actually going to send it to our system here. So, and we can see that. Uh, so over here, I have Wireshark running. And uh, I've got a filter set, so I'm filtering for uh, the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, and then I'm ignoring uh, SSH traffic because I am SSH'd into this Raspberry Pi, so that would kind of generate some false positive uh, data there. So we're going to just start this over again. And then I'm going to make a web request out to example.com. And so here we are using HTTPS. So this is going to be encrypted, this, uh, this request. Uh, it returns back some HTML, like most web pages do. And then we're going to switch over to Wireshark. And here in Wireshark, we see uh, a bunch of stuff going on. We see the DNS request made for example.com. And then we see a TCP session that is initialized uh, here with a SYN, an ACK, and an ACK, there's your, your standard three-way handshake. Uh, that book that I mentioned, uh, we'll talk about this in detail uh, about the TCP protocol. But what we are interested in today is this TLS traffic. So I'm actually gonna add that onto the filter. I'm gonna say and, and TLS. So now we're seeing only the TLS traffic, that encrypted connection to example.com. And so, we can see, we can even see in here that that is, in fact, the name of the server that we are connecting to, that we are sending this client hello message to out into the world. And then at some point, the server uh, will, uh, it, it'll do a key exchange and it will start sending that encrypted data. So these application data messages, that's what you're seeing there is, that's the actual encrypted data. And we don't, we don't see that HTML code down here because it's encrypted. So if we want to get inside of that encrypted connection to see what is going on, we are going to use a tool called man in the middle proxy. So over here on this documentation on this GitHub page, I have documentation for two, two tools actually. So I have a documentation for a tool called man, man in the middle proxy, which we will use today. And then one for SSL split, which we won't use. SSL split is for doing arbitrary TLS streams that are not merely HTTP. So man in the middle proxy has the limitation that it will only proxy traffic if it is HTTP traffic on the inside of that TLS connection. So the way this is gonna work is uh, man in the middle proxy is gonna run on some port locally on my system. So I'm gonna have it run on port 8081. You can pick whatever open port you desire. But in order to get that web traffic that is being passed through my system to go to this port, we're gonna have to use an IP tables rule like this to redirect traffic that has a destination port of 443 so we know that that's what uh, example.com is using. And in fact, we can see that in Wireshark. 
we can see that in our client hello here, if we go to the internet protocol layer, uh, excuse me, that's wrong, and go to the transport layer, here we can see the destination port is 443, right there. So uh, that would have been safe to assume, but we can verify that in Wireshark itself. And we're going to use this redirect uh, directive here, and we're going to say to port 8081, and that's where this is running, so it will send that traffic over here. Uh, and then man in the middle proxy will make, will attempt, if it gets a connection, it will attempt to then connect to the actual server and uh, proxy that traffic. But it lets us pretend to be the actual web server that the request is going to. And we're going to see some of the things that happen when we do that. So with that, I'm going to run... Uh, our, uh, so first I'm going to run our IP tables command, which I just have uh, wrapped up inside of the shell script for convenience. And then we're going to run man in the middle proxy. And then this screen comes up. So it is now hosting that server and it is waiting for an incoming connection. So now we're going to go here and we're going to run our curl request again. And we're going to see if we get anything. But we do not, because we get this error, this warning. It says cl client TLS handshake failed, and then the error message goes away. But we can see a similar error message up here when, with this curl command. It said curl failed to verify the legitimacy of the server, and therefore would not establish a secure connection to it. So man the middle proxy does not have control over the certificates that example.com does. So there is no way if this is being done properly that I'm going to be able to get inside of this secure connection. But unfortunately, on many client engagements and personal projects, looking at IoT devices, oftentimes IoT devices will fail to verify the certificates of the server that it's connecting to. So the way we're going to simulate that in this curl command is with this dash K flag. This dash K flag is going to make it ignore any certificate errors it gets and just connect uh, blindly to the server that it thinks is example.com, but is in fact my man in the middle proxy system. So now if I run this command over here in the man in the middle proxy, we see that we intercepted this request, this git request to example.com, and then we can even click enter and go into here and see the content of the request, which is not really anything because it's a git request. But over here in the response, there we have it. We have that data, which we have decrypted because we were able to intercept that SSL connection and trick it into connecting to our proxy server. And so, there it is, folks. We are now able to uh, to intercept SSL requests, but this is all relying on this fact that the uh, the device, because we passed this flag, is not doing certificate verification. And unfortunately, this is something that we see on many IoT devices, and is very useful in the security analysis of said IoT devices. So. That is the end of this video. I would like to thank you all for watching. Please continue to comment and subscribe and like the video and share it with your friends if you found this to be helpful. Please let me know what type of videos you'd like me to look at in the future and have a great day.